Hi, second grade. Mrs. Snyder here. Today we are doing lesson three of free, ver of free verse poetry. This will be our last lesson um, with this topic. So let's get started. All right. So today's lesson, we are going to do three things. We are going to review what we've learned so far about free verse poetry. We are going to add one more trait to free verse poetry called theme and finding out how do we find the theme in poems. And then we'll have a little bit of a review. So free verse poetry, let's review. Last week, we added a trait to give us five questions we focus on when we are asking ourselves about free verse poetry to help us better understand it. The first question we ask ourselves is, what is the topic? What is this poem about? We ask ourselves, are there rhyming words? Free verse poems do not have rhyming words. We ask ourselves, are there describing words? Does the poet use words that give you a clear picture of the topic in your mind? We, ask our, we also ask ourselves, does the author use figurative language? Remember, when an author uses figurative language, the author is comparing the topic to something else not related to help you get a better picture in your mind. And last week, we added repetition. This is when the author repeats words or phrases throughout the poem. And the author repeats those words or phrases to draw your attention to something. Um, last week, we looked about how it drew our attention back to the topic of the poem. So this week, we are going to talk about theme and finding the theme in poems. Now, we've talked about theme earlier this year. Theme is the main message or lesson in a story. That's so important. I'm going to say that again. Theme is the message or lesson in a poem or a story. The author does not tell you what the theme is. The author will not tell you the message. You have to figure the message out. And this is how we do it. We do these two things. One. We look for key details in the poem or the story, and we think about how the details are related. The connection of those details can help us lead um, our minds to learning a lesson or getting a message from the poem or the story. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the poems we've read in the last two lessons, and we're going to look for key details. And think about how those details relate in order to determine the theme. Okay, let me show you. So if you think back to, let me see where I can put myself here. The poem Snow Shape. I'm going to reread it to you to refresh your minds. And then I'm going to show you what I did over here. The story is called, I'm sorry, the poem is called Snow Shape. Snow is falling from the sky. It gently lands on the ground. It's a bright, bright white, just like cold milk. It looks so soft and smooth. I hate to ruin it with my feet, but I have got a plan. I stand up tall and close my eyes, and then straight back I fall. I slide my arms up and down. I move my legs in and out. I stand up to see what I have made. A four-foot shape in the snow of me. I have a graphic organizer over here that's going to help me figure out the theme. I have one, two, three clues from the story or the poem. And I'm going to see how those clues are related to come up with the theme. So the first clue from the poem I took from right here, this text evidence, the snow is bright white soft and smooth. I took my next detail from right here. The person in the, po in the poem falls back into the snow. He closes his eyes and I picture him going, falling straight back. The last clue I took right from here the person in the poem moves his arms and legs in the snow to make a shape of himself. Now let's connect those ideas. So we're picturing that bright, soft snow. 
the person falling back, the person moving his arms and his legs. What message can we get from those details? The message that I got is that it's snow is pretty, but it's also fun to play in. So the theme or the message the author would like you to learn from this poem is that snow is both pretty and it's fun to play with. Our clues connecting together led us to this message. Let's look at another poem. We also did the poem in the sky. This was one of your practice poems. I'll reread to refresh your brain. In the sky, outdoors on a clear day, look up in the sky. What do you see there? Look, I see a giant polar bear. Look, I see a pale flower growing. Look, I see a buffalo and her baby. Wait, it's changing. Now I see a cowboy on his horse, galloping, galloping across the sky. I wonder where he'll ride. I'm looking for three clues and how those clues connect to help me come up with a theme. I took my first clue from right here. You see clouds in the sky. I took my next clues from right here. The clouds keep changing shape. And the clouds change from a polar bear to a flower to a buffalo to a cowboy. Now let's take those clues and let's connect them. We're picturing the clouds in the sky. We see a polar bear change a shape. Now it looks like a flower. The clouds change shape again. Now the person sees a buffalo and its baby. The clouds change shape again. And now the person sees a cowboy. Well, from those clues, I can figure out that, you know what, it's really fun when you use your imagination because those clouds really aren't a polar bear or a flower, or a buffalo, or a cowboy. We have to use our imaginations to picture those things in the shapes of the clouds. And in order to do that, we need to use our imagination. So I can tell that the theme of this poem, or the message the author wants me to learn, is that you can have a lot of fun when you use your imagination. The next poem we talked about was Nature Walk. I'll reread to refresh your memories. Nature Walk. When you take a walk in the fall, Leaves are like a blanket on the ground. They crunch under your feet with each step you take. When you take a walk in the fall, the air feels as cool as drops of rain on your cheek. It smells like clean cotton towels. When you take a walk in the fall, the outdoors will excite you. It's a wonderful time. I'm looking for clues that lead me to a theme or a message. So my first clue I took from up here, when you walk, you hear the leaves crunching. I took my next clue from right here. When you walk, you can feel the cool air on your cheek. My next clue from right here. When you walk, the air smells like clean cotton towels. So we're gonna connect those ideas. When you walk, you hear the leaves. When you walk, you feel the air on your cheeks. When you walk, you can smell how clean the air is. Well, this is all happening during fall. These are all nice things happening. I can get the message that fall is a wonderful or a fun time of the year. You can make it a fun time of the year. That's the message or the theme the author wants us to get. And the last poem that we did and you did this one in your independent practice, was called See a Star. It's not shiny or shimmery. I see a star. It's not burning or bright. I see a star. It is not in the dark sky. I see a star. It is black as the night. I see a star. I think it might like me. It seems to be waving. 
the sea star I see. Oh, the sea is so splendid. I'm taking my clues right from the poem. Right from here, the person sees a type of a star that does not shine. My next clue from right here, the star is not bright, it is black. My next star from right here, the star seems like it is waving at the person. So I need to see how these clues connect. So the person's looking around, sees a new type of star, it's listing its characteristics. It doesn't shine, it's not bright, it's black. It looks like it's moving, like it's waving. What's the theme? What message can we learn from connecting those clues? Well, we can figure out that there are cool things we can discover if we look. If this person weren't looking around, they would not have discovered cool things or something cool, a cool new star. Um, theme is when we take clues from the story or the poem and we connect those clues to figure out a message the author wants us to learn. All right, let's review. So I believe now we've talked about six different things we look for in free verse poetry. I'm going to give you about five seconds and I want you to see if you can come up with three in your brain on your own. Do you have some? Okay, let's review. It has a clear topic, what the poem is about. There is no rhyme. Lots of describing words so you can picture the topic in your mind. Figurative language, where the author compares the topic to something totally different, which helps you get a good picture in your mind. Repetition, where words and phrases are repeated to draw your attention to something. And theme, when the author leads you to a message with clues in the poem. All right, it is your turn. Time to practice. So you're going to open up the Google Doc activity for this lesson in Google Classroom. If you get stuck and you need help, you can always come back to this video for some um, pointers and some information we talked about. You can send me a message in Google Classroom or you can send me an email. Uh, I look forward to seeing your work. Great work with poetry. Next week, we will do a different topic. So stay tuned. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next week. Bye, second grade.